Greetings and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to episode 200, and it's in the title, read it, uh, of Spearhead Sunday's podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and uh, if you want uh, an extra episode of this every single week, support me on Patreon. You can do it for as little as three bucks a month, cheap as fuck. You get an extra episode of this podcast exclusively to Patreon supporters. I uh, just do an extra episode, and that's there. We also have a Discord server, bunch of other benefits. You get your own exclusive Spearhead Sundays mug, which I still haven't received yet. Other pe- I've, people in my fucking Discord are sending me photos of the mug that they have. I don't have my own mug. It's ridiculous, but hopefully that'll, uh, that will arrive soon. I think I, um, I was talking to Patreon and I, I cleared the design by them and then they were like, oh, yeah, great. And then, you know, a few months later, everyone else starts getting their mugs and I messaged them. I was like, hey, where's mine? And they were like, oh, did, did you want one? No, no, I don't want. I don't want my own fucking mug. You know what I want? I designed it, and I only want people who like me to have it. I would never wear my own shit. I would never use my own products. I don't want to. If if I make a piece of merch, I don't want to fucking look at it ever. Of course, I want my shit. So that's um, that's coming. Jeez, what a what an enraged start to the video, guys. I'm gonna get straight into it. Okay. Uh, from the title, I suppose th- this might be why you're here. I might even upload this on my main channel. Um depending on if I think I've, I've covered this lucidly enough or, or with enough uh, fucked jokes as well, because uh, I am going to joke about this. And I would like to make very clear, just because I'm telling a few jokes about this doesn't mean I'm celebrating it. So uh, if you've been on Twitter or YouTube or involved with it at, at, at all, uh, you will have seen that Leafy has been uh, deleted from YouTube. His entire channel is gone. Now, I want to come out straight straight out of the gates and say... Uh, say two things. One, uh, I think the he brought it upon himself, right? Two, I think YouTube went too far and they should not have deleted his channel, okay? Uh, I think both of those things can be true um, and I'm going to tell you why. So Leafy, uh, he's like started the commentary thing, which I've kind of been a part of, kind of not really... Uh, I think I, in around 2016, when commentary was really blowing up, I saw it, there was like my chance to kind of get really deep into this community and go hard and just become one of those YouTubers. And then something in my brain went, I don't want to talk about fucking YouTube drama for the rest of my fucking life. I'm pivoting. And that's when I started doing more comedy stuff because I'm a stand up comedian. I understand the YouTube drama and I'm kind of interested by it, but I don't want it to be my entire life like it is for some of these cunts because that's boring, right? Um, Now, uh, I do realize that I said I don't want to talk about YouTube drama for the rest of my life. Uh, Four years later, it's 2020. I'm sitting in my red chair talking about Leafy. So I guess I've failed (laughs) in that that, uh, mission statement. But at least I'm getting on stage and telling dick jokes. Oh, no, wait. That's illegal because of coronavirus. Oh, fuck. I am Leafy. This is terrible. No, look. Okay. On a serious note, here's what I think. I uh, I relate a lot to to Leafy, and I totally understand why people like his stuff. I think he he gets like a he gets a lot of a, a, a lot of negative attention, uh, and a lot of it is justified. But uh, a lot of people are also completely ignoring uh, or downplaying the appeal of Leafy's content, and the the reason why people like it is often the reason why people hate it, and that is it's low effort, fuck the world, I don't care if you're mad, I'm not even trying to be funny, I'm just going to say offensive shit. That's like what it is. And to be honest, that's my roots, you know? Like that's how I kind of started doing this shit. I've moved away from it a little bit because I I just want to be as funny as possible and I love stand-up comedy. But like where I started was, uh, you know, just fucking uh, making fun of people for the sake of it, not even for comedy, just making fun of cunts, uh, flagrantly, like, uh, disobeying community guidelines because it was funny, uh, getting post-banned, doing it again anyway, saying, ha-ha, you can't stop me, I'm going to do whatever I want. And and, and that shit has a huge appeal because no one else does it because if you do do it, the uh, ultimate end of that path, and this is why I moved off it, is... What's happened to Leafy? You get fucking nuked from space. 
You know what Leafy was? He was Osama Bin Laden, right? Going, oh, I can do whatever I want. You can't find me. And then he throws a plane at the towers. And then America goes, oh, yeah, cool. And they send a strike force, take him out in the middle of the night, and then plant hentai on his PC so everyone thinks he's a freak. Now, I do realize that analogy is a bit of a stretch. And also, uh, America orchestrated 9-11, so it doesn't really work. But that's what I'm going with. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to keep this fucking entertaining because all I'm seeing on, on this topic is cunts just arguing with each other and going for each other's neck. My serious thoughts on it are uh, Leafy brought consequences on himself and uh, he's not a fucking idiot. He's a very smart person. Uh, he knew he was going to get consequences. Whether or not he knew YouTube would just nuke him from space and completely delete his channel. I think that's, uh, I, I don't think that's what he would have thought would have happened. I mean, I didn't think that was going to happen to him. Although I kind of did. I called it a few months back. I wrote on Twitter and I, and I said, look, YouTube is almost certainly, I said something like YouTube's almost certainly going to delete Leafy's channel. If he keeps going like this, uh, people might celebrate, but I would ask with Leafy gone, who will be on the fringes of acceptable uh, next? And by that I meant, and, and you know, I was right. Lots of people are celebrating this, but a lot of the people that are celebrating this shit do content that's in the same genre, which is, you know, comment and criticism. And, you know, to be fair to those people, there is a lot more humor, a lot more comment and a lot more fairness in their uh, content. But with Leafy, who was at the edge of acceptability gone, that border now moves closer to me. You know, and I, I would say that I go a lot harder than than some of these other cunts on YouTube because I that's just the type of humor that I that I make. Um, so it does concern me YouTube just nuking his channel with no warning, or at least that's what it looks like. Maybe he did get strikes, maybe he didn't. But what it looks like is that they didn't strike him for the videos that he was making. He had no strikes on his channel, so no warnings or any strikes he did have had expired. So you go back to a clean slate. That's how it works on YouTube. And they've just fucking nuked his channel uh, with seemingly with no warning. Um, so I don't like that. I don't like that YouTube has uh, seemed to have like stepped and danced around their own policies to surgically remove someone from the community that they don't approve of. And of course, there's going to be many creators that YouTube doesn't approve of. I mean, it's such a big website. You can't like everything that everyone's fucking uploading. But I would say that if we're really going to surgically excise people uh, because uh, after after like finding any reason to nitpick and find where they violated guidelines, can we look at the cunts that are doing seance videos with dead celebrities the day after they die? Maybe that's where we should start with that kind of stuff. I mean, that's clickbait. Like it's it's. I understand why he's hit. He's um faced consequences, but I do think YouTube has overreached a little bit, basically. Now, that being said, right, uh, uh, In now that I've kind of spoken my piece defending Leafy, here's uh, why I think he might be a little bit of an idiot. Now, uh, you can't make 12 videos on one person in a row that is just targeted harassment. Now, a lot of people have been saying, oh, he made fucking nine, 12 videos on fucking Pokimane. And the big counter argument to that is, oh, only a few of them were actually about her. The rest of them just had her in the thumbnail and the title. And then it was actually about finance and the stock market. Now, that is a non-argument because all you're saying is, oh, he didn't violate this guideline. He actually violated the clickbait misleading thumbnail and title thing, which would still get you consequences consequences from YouTube. Uh, and, and also just because you don't speak about someone in the actual video, if you're still photoshopping photos of one girl after you've like, you know, called her ugly and done a bunch of said a bunch of mean things about her and all that kind of stuff. And I'm not saying that Pokemon should be free from criticism because she's a public figure. We're all open to it. But if you make a couple of videos going at someone and criticizing them, and then you make 
seven to ten more videos where their name is in the title and you photoshopped like unflattering, ugly photos of them or put them in scenarios that they wouldn't want to be seen in. Like one of them was her in a fucking a hijab. Another one was her like uh, in an explosion and, 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 and like all that kind of stuff. If you do that, to me, that still fits YouTube's definition of targeted harassment. It's not as bad as doing that and then also including content about her, but it is it it, it does violate the guidelines. Like you're I, I do think if you don't think that, you are dumb. Um because just because you it's I mean if you put if you were to put it in like a in a in a stalker's tense. And I'm not I'm not absolutely not saying that Leafy's stalking this woman, but say if someone had a restraining order against someone, uh, and then they started posting photos of them, it's like, oh well, I didn't go near them, I just did this. And you know what I mean? It's like it's like deliberately crossing the line, but not too much, uh, and playing with fire, essentially is what he was doing, and he got fucking burned. Um, so I do think that he fucked up there. And, uh, but, but, but even though, even with the criticism that I have for the type of content that he was making in the sense that it, it, you know, it it was like, it was more criticism than entertainment, a few of them. Right. And again, I totally get that because let's be real. That was my roots. That's where I came from. And that is like entertaining in itself. That's that like angsty teen energy of fuck the rules. I'll do what I want and being edgy for the sake of it. That shit is fun. But, uh, unfortunately the, the internet and these companies that run it do not want that shit there. And they have made it pretty clear in their guidelines and with the actions that they've taken in, in the past where in, in the sense that everyone saw this shit coming, right? Uh, especially him. You know, if, if I were him, I would know that what I'm doing is playing with fire and at some point I'm going to get burned. Uh, what I think has happened is I don't think uh, he was expecting that heavy of a response. And I do think the response was too heavy. I think what should have happened is YouTube should have deleted all of the Pokemon videos in one swoop and gone, that's strike one. So, you know, uh, and then he could continue on. Um, now if he just made one, maybe two videos, the first two videos on Pokemon, I think he would have been sweet. And I, I don't think he should have deserved a strike for the first two videos. Um, and I think she's even said as much as well. Um, but the problem is he did those other 10 uh, that, yes, only very, very briefly touched on her. I think, I'm pretty sure that I watched all of them. He briefly touched on her and then just went into like finance and stocks and bullshit and ordering food and that kind of stuff, which is, you know, funny of like, ha, you think I'm going to talk about this? I'm actually talking about this. But at the end of the day, uh, after those two videos, then going on and doing fucking 10, 12 more, that fits YouTube's definition of targeted harassment. And I think that's pretty clear. So I think it's, I think he deserved consequences. I don't think he deserved this. Um, and those are my thoughts on it. Uh, and it, it, it really, saddens me to see other content creators genuinely celebrate the deplatforming of of anyone. I think, you know, if if someone does something truly horrific and you can prove that, like if they've raped someone or if they're a hardcore racist and they literally mean that, not not in the I don't mean like a PewDiePie situation where the news goes, he's racist and he goes, well I'm not and I can prove that. And then, you know, if someone's like genuinely racist uh, or if they've genuinely done something actually terrible in real life. Totally get that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a creator getting completely nuked and completely deplatformed without strikes, without warning, done in the middle of the night when they were asleep, which I think would have been done on purpose. Um, that scares the fuck out of me. Uh, and I don't think it should be celebrated. I think what really should have been happening is it should be questioned in the sense that I think a lot of these YouTube creators, even if they don't like him, should have gone, okay, cool. I think Levy should have gotten consequences, but why has this happened? Why wasn't he given warning? Could this happen to me? And what specifically did he do to uh, break the rules? Um, 
that have warranted this severity of action from YouTube. That's what I want to know because at the moment there's been no statement from YouTube at all. It's just been like fucking USSR shit. Like, all right, Leafy, jump in the helicopter. We're going for a ride. And then we never see him again. And that, that to me is scary because I mean, look, I have a strike. I've got one strike on my channel right now. And that is a video from a video that I uploaded in 2013 that uh, got um, taken down and then I appealed that takedown notice, right? And I got a strike after my appeal. So, and, and that, that video that I uploaded at the time did not violate guidelines. It was retroactively applied. I got a strike for, for guidelines that I violated when they didn't exist at the time of upload. So that's why when I see creators getting fucking deplatformed and deleted and all this kind of shit, it freaks me out because it, I, I, I truly do believe that this slippery slope argument. I mean, we've literally seen it. Like I, um, I've had to completely change uh, the way that I speak in my own videos. You know, I'm I'm Australian and the reality of being Australian, I mean, this might be because I'm also from a working class background, but the reality for a huge number of Australians, people from Scotland, the UK as well, we say cunt all the time. And, the, and, and our definition and what cunt means to us, completely different to what it means to most of Americans. It's not a heinously offensive word. However, YouTubers change their policies and they have three separate categories for swearing there's light swearing like hell and damn stuff you'd see on like a cartoon show uh there's like moderate swearing like shit and fuck which you can say uh after 30 seconds into the video or you can say it if it's censored right and you can still have ads or then they have a they've just announced a new thing this is new to me it's only happened in the last couple of weeks uh extreme profanity i can't remember what they what they label it as, but let's just say extreme profanity. Cunt is there, and the only other two examples they list is retard and the N-word. So cunt is literally marked as a hateful slur. It's like cunt, retard, N-word, and other hateful slurs. So cunt to YouTube is a hateful slur, right? Up there with the N-word. So I've been doing experimenting with, you know, can I say cunt if it's at the end of the video? Can I say it if it's, a, you know complimenting someone like, oh, you're a mad cunt. Lots of different ways of, of saying the the word. And uh, every single time it's been in, in one of my videos, at any point in any context, it gets demonetized and the reach is insanely affected. So bi-monthly bull, for me, which usually always hits like 80,000 minimums, you know, some of them have like half a million. Some of the clips from bi-monthly bull have, you know, in excess of million. One of them has more than 15 million views, right? So this is the stuff that my fans really, really want to see. It's the shit that if they see it and they're recommended, they're going, fuck yeah, and you one of those, I'm going to watch it. So I said cunt in the latest episode and a video that should get 80, 150,000 views is sitting on 20,000 views. Uh, nine out of 10 of my most recently released videos. Like the, the reach has been so suppressed, it doesn't make sense. And it's because it's been manually reviewed and marked as having hateful slurs in it because I said cunt. And the I strategically said cunt I was literally discussing the usage of the word. Wasn't calling anyone a cunt, was just discussing the usage and the context of the word cunt. You can't do it. So now... You know, I have to make the decision, right, of either I keep saying cunt in every single one of my videos and my channel will die and I will run out of money or I adapt uh, and go with YouTube's policies on this one while speaking out against it and thinking that it's unfair and hopefully they do change it. Um, and I, I think that's where Leafy fucked up. He, he went down the other road, which is, well, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm too big to fail. And I think what we've learned from these giant mega global corporations, the main thing that we've learned is they do not give a fuck about you or any individual creator. All they care about is money and their image. And that 
is it. And the image is only because that is tied to money. There are plenty of companies out there that don't give a fuck about their image because uh, they only have to make money. You know, perfect example is like companies that sell weapons to countries or companies that fucking drill and all that kind of shit. They don't need to care about their image. They know they're evil. <laughs> they just want to make money, right? So I think that's where he's, he's fucked up. Uh, and that's a shame. It's weird. I'm like, my opinion is he brought it on himself, but also YouTube overreached and overreacted. Uh, and that makes me worried for the future of this website. And those are my thoughts. So, uh, yeah, closing thoughts. If you make 12 videos on one person in a row, and I don't think you can argue they were not on her because her name's in the title. She's in the thumbnail. All of the comments are discussing her. It's like, I, I, I truly do think that fits the definition of targeted harassment. I think if you do 12 videos in a row within a month too as well, so it's like targeted, sustained, and every single day, I mean, it, it does fit the definition of targeted harassment, no matter how much or little she was discussed after those first two or three videos that were entirely about her. I mean, I think two, three videos with no response from the other person. If there's a response from the other person and there's back and forth, I think that's I think that's kind of different. I mean, it's it gets boring, but it's different because they're engaging with it and they're not like, um, they're not, affected by it. But say, look, if I was to make a video on someone and they, uh, the video banged and then, and then it created a wave of videos about that person. And then that person took a break for their own mental health. That's where personally I would stop because you don't know what's going on in their world. You don't know what's going on in their head or how mentally stable they are. They are and you do have to be careful, especially with all this fucking quarantine shit. I mean, mental health is uh, like people are really, really struggling, a lot of people, and at a lot of the time that shit's invisible. So if if that was to happen, that's where I would stop, and I would think that anyone with a, with a large platform should stop. When you have a smaller platform, it's a bit different because you're like really – punching up, taking on Titans. But when you got 5 million subscribers, I mean, when I hit like 150, 200,000, that's when I was like, okay, I need to be careful about who I pick. And I, and I need to make clear that when I take the piss out of someone, I don't hate them. Right. And it's a little bit different if, if you're criticizing someone, someone for something really scummy that they've done, if they're scamming fans, uh, if they're, if they're running a, a rort or, or doing like a, uh, definitely bad thing. So Supreme Pat is a good example of that scamming his fans. I think you can be harsher, but that's because you have like a, a concrete reason. If you're just calling someone shit uh, and saying they have boring content, again, valid criticism, um, but you, you can't be mean, I suppose, because uh, I don't know. I just think, I mean, I, I'm, I'm all about funny. And I, I just think that I understand the appeal of the reckless, fuck the world, burn it all down. Totally get that because I was obsessed with that and I engaged with it and that's what I did. But I uh, evolved and moved past it um, and I wouldn't do it now because it's not funny. And all I care about is funny. Um, and I think I'm just running in circles at this point. I think that Leafy's a bit of a dumb cunt. And he flew clue too close to the sun. He flew to the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> he flew too close to the sun and he got fucking burned. Uh, but YouTube overreacted and it's, it's not good that his channel is gone. And it's even worse that other creators are celebrating this because all that does is embolden YouTube and go, oh, we thought, because you know they have their meetings about creators that are like a uh, cultural figures that are important in the culture of YouTube. So you know that they had a meeting and were like, well, if we fucking take down this guy and the entire community revolts, that will be really bad for us. But they took that gamble and they deleted his channel. And when the entire community celebrates that, YouTube goes, oh, fuck, nothing happened. We can do that shit. Let's do it again with this guy we don't like. So I do think it's a slippery slope. I do think that is definitely real when it comes to tech censorship. Um, 
but I also think Leafy fucked up and was an idiot and should have not done 12 videos on one person. That's all he had to do. He could have had his comeback, done the normal commentary thing, and as long as he spread it out across everyone and was fair in his criticisms, he would still be here today. He could keep on growing um, and his fans would still be able to watch him on YouTube. But I I think, look, I think that uh, it just goes to show how fucking important it is to spread yourself across many different mediums. That's why I'm on YouTube. That's why I'm on the, I'm on the stage because, you know, while I, you know, just, I have to censor myself a little bit on my main channel. Um, I'm still going to do the jokes that I want to do. I just might not be able to say cunt. Uh, But that being said, that's why I love performing live because no one controls what you say. There are no guideline strikes. There's no fucking robot deciding what your intent was because it, you know, picked up using its text to speech detector, what you meant when you said that, you know what I mean? So that's why, uh, I am fucking dying to get back on stage because I am a little bit sick of trying to, live inside this fucking weird environment where you have you have to abide by the rules of these huge companies that don't give a fuck about you because otherwise it could be all over any minute um but that being said I'm going to continue to be incredibly unfiltered on my podcast because it's spread across multiple different platforms you know if my YouTube channel gets deleted that would hurt me so much, that would be fucking terrible. If my podcast gets deleted from YouTube, no worries. It's on Spotify, it's on Apple, it's on all the Android apps, it's on multiple different platforms. So that's why I'm putting a lot of effort into my Instagram and TikTok and all these other fucking platforms because you can't be on one because look at Leafy. He's creating an Instagram account now. You dickhead, you should have done that four million subs ago. Um, you got to be on everything. Because if you if you go all in on one and you get deleted, guess what? It's fucking over. So, look, I think he'll be fine. His fans are super loyal. He'll he'll figure something else out, or he'll just go back to making heaps of money on the stock market, like he was talking about. Uh, who knows? All right, those are my thoughts. I've been talking for twenty seven minutes about some commentary YouTuber who used to follow me on Twitter. Um, that's enough. <laughs> Dear God, I miss stand-up. Um, all right. Now, with that being said, right, manscaped.com, best, most well-groomed nuts in the game. Your boy's feeling fucking groomed. Manscaped.com, the code has changed. The new code is SPEARS20 for, for 20% off and free shipping, your Manscaped razor. This is the last ad read of the little trial that we've been doing. So if you've been waiting on picking up the razor and using my code, now's the time uh, to do it. Seriously, fucking brilliant razor. Like I've, I've said it so many times. I've told the stories about me using it. I've told the stories about me spending way more money on something from like the shaver shop that was a really good one supposedly and it cut my ball bag up. This one is like the sweet vibrating kiss of a grandma. And uh, that, I don't know if that is the best promo for this... <laughs> <laughs> for this razor, but it's what we're going with. It's like a sweet kiss from your grandma on your ball bag. Manscaped.com, use code SPEARS20. That's the new code. The old code SPEARS does not work anymore. It is SPEARS20, all one word, all caps, 20% off and free shipping of your razor. Seriously, really, really high quality shit. And, uh, oh, that sounds a little bit fucking sexual, doesn't it? Heard that before, huh? Um, yeah, manscaped.com. Get your razor. It supports the show. If you want, you know, to support this show, it's the razor. It's Patreon. That's how we keep all this shit going. All right. Manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS20. Now, dude, I have had a fucking week, man. What did I, what else did I want to talk about here? Let me talk about my notes and then I'm going to get into my fucking thing. Um, where are we? Oh, dude, I've, uh, the, the new Batman trailer came out. It looks sick. I was so, when I found out that Robert, Robert Pattinson was going to be Batman, I was really on the fence about it. I was like, oh, fuck, Batman, this could be terrible or it could be awesome. And I watched the trailer. As soon as I saw Robert Pattinson, well, as soon as I saw, I was like, oh, I don't know if Robert Pattinson could be a good Batman. 
I got halfway through the trailer. Dude, as soon as I saw Batman, like, completely violently overreact and break 16 bones in a criminal's body and then punched them multiple times in the face while they were unconscious on the ground just for asking, who are you? When I saw that level of like American police force, violent overreaction, brutality. That's when I was like, Robert Pattinson, you're fucking Batman. That's what we want to see. Hey, who are you? Oh my God. Every bone in my body is fucking broken. That's my Batman. Completely over the top and brutal. I fucking love it. That's really cool. It looks great. Uh, the, the only thing about the trailer is that, and I, I think this is what hurt the third movie in the um, the Nolan trilogy a little bit. It was an awesome film, but I think this is what hurt it a little bit, and I think this is what hurt Batman vs Superman, and I also think this is what hurt Justice League. And it's often uh, something that DC seems to make the mistake with, and this is what gives me pause, and this is also why the Joker film was so good. The Joker, there was one character... And there was one bad guy and that bad guy was like the world and the system, right? Uh, what made the Dark Knight amazing was there was one villain, the Joker, and then there was a little bit of Two-Face, right? What made the first Batman Begins film great was it was, is that what it, the first one in the trilogy of Nolan's one? It was just the Scarecrow and then that there was real simple, two bad guys. Why... Justice League was fucking convoluted was there was one bad guy, but he had a big boss and then there were a few different villains. And then also Superman was gone and there was too many characters. Uh, Batman versus Superman. They tried to tackle too many stories. They did like Batman's origin and Superman's origin and Superman's family and this and that. There were like too many villains and too many stories from the comics that gave me pause uh, and seeing in the new Batman trailer, it looks like uh, fucking the Riddler is the main bad guy. It looks like there's a lot of Joker vibe going on of people wearing Joker makeup. It also looks like um, the uh, Catwoman's in it. And it also looks like the penguins in it as well. That gives me a little bit of pause of like, Whoa, I don't want to do too many characters at once but it could be done well. Um, it's just like, you know, it's just that classic thing of like, if there's too many characters, too many villains, too many stories, sometimes you just get tangled in all the pieces. So I, hopefully they don't fuck that up, but I'm cautiously optimistic because, uh, Look, I, I just I just hope that it's good. It looks awesome, and uh, I take back everything I thought about Robert Pattinson. He looks fucking sick as Batman, and I am stoked for the film. I just hope they don't try and tell too many stories because that's uh, that's some, that's what killed Justice League, and that's what killed Batman vs Superman was uh, especially Batman vs Superman as a comic fan, like someone who totally understands a bunch of different huge impactful stories that impact the universe. Batman vs Superman especially was like three or four completely different Batman, Superman and Batman, Superman stories tried to be told in one and they fucked it. If they did one of them, it would have been incredible, but they tried to do like three huge ones and it was messy. So hopefully they don't do that with a new Batman and hopefully it's just like one simple story. Let's start slow. Um, now, uh, I also wanted to get into, dude, uh, I have been, as you guys know, I've been in and out of doctors uh, trying to fix my fucking nose. So I uh, can't breathe out of my nose. That's what I sound like all day. And I've been getting blood tests done. I got my CT scan where they scan my head. I, be, I, I went and saw a fucking nose and throat doctor. By far the worst appointments I've ever had in my life was the nose and throat specialist. I mean, I totally understand He's doing, he did a great job and I'm sure he's a professional, but it must suck doing 
uh, your job. He, I felt like uh, it's like the pap smear, you know? Like no one, no woman wants to get a pap smear. If you do, you might be watching too much hentai, too much weird shit on Pornhub, you know what I mean? Like nobody wants to get a pap smear, so no one would ever be grateful for the doctor who's, you know, like you walk in and she puts tongs in your pussy and opens it up like it's some kind of fucking like vines you know what i mean like it's not it's not good you know no one's like oh good i get to have a pap smear thanks so much doc no one wants to say thanks after some chick has spent like 20 minutes gazing inside your pussy without you know giving it a little tickle <laughs> no one's no one's excited for that and i felt like that you know um i'm just gonna plug my laptop in here, in here. one second um so i went to the the uh, the nose and throat specialist, right? Because I've I've also been getting really bad sleep apnea, um, and that's just where you know you can't fucking breathe when you're asleep. Jazz sent me a recording of me when I was asleep. It sounded fucked, like I'm literally suffocating. I'm there was there's points in it where for 30 seconds I do not breathe in. I'm l- listening to it and I go, oh, I'm dying. You know, if that's me at 60, I'm I'm dead. So I have to get this shit sorted. So I go into all these fucking doctors and tests and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, right? Results. So it turns out uh, I have, I do have allergies. So we just thought, we just thought initially that I had really bad allergies and that's why my nose was blocked. So I do have allergies. Uh, I'm very allergic to dust mites. I'm, I've got a low level of allergy to dogs and I am highly allergic to my fucking shit cat. Just, just what you thought, that bitch couldn't get any more of a fucking nuisance and a burden on my life. Look at my hands, bro. They are scratched the fuck up. And like that's not enough for this bitch. She also has to be literally poisonous to my immune system. So that's great. The cat's fucking poison. Awesome. I should should have never gotten involved with that bitch. Get rid of her, right? No, I'm not going to do that, right? Um so we thought that was the issue, but then I get my head scan back. Uh, and I went and saw the nose and the throat specialist, and he did all of these absolutely fucked tests. It was, I hated it. I mean, it's great now that I know what's going on with me, but dude, it was horrific. I go in there and we do all the questions and he asks me all this stuff and he goes, okay, cool. So what I need to do is I need to have a look uh, at your nose and your throat. And I was like, oh, but that's what the, the CT scan was. And he goes, no, 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 I need to have a look. And I was like, okay, cool. So he's going to look in my nose. Dude, he goes, all right. I need to spray this in your nose. He sprays this up my nose, both nostrils. It's like a numbing agent. So he sprays that up my nose and then it goes down the back of my throat. My whole nose is numb. The back of my throat is numb. Dude, the back of my throat was so fucking numb. I felt like I was like Riley Reed getting ready for a throat scene. You know what I mean? Like I was I was about to put in fucking 30 minutes of, of work. <laughs> with that doctor and six of his mates. That's what I felt like I was prepping for. It was so fucked. I, I really hated the sensation of having the whole nose and then the back of my throat like completely numb. It was terrible. And then because it's all connected, my whole mouth started to go numb. It was awful, right? Um, but then I was like, oh, why do you need to do that? Just to look. He gets out this fucking gun attached to like a, like a, a pool noodle and it's this camera that he sticks all the way up my nose into the back of my throat and I have to keep it there for like two minutes while he goes, all right, go, ah, move your chin this way, move your jaw that way, lift your tongue up, lift it down. I've got this fucking tube so far in my nose that it's going down the back of my throat, I almost vomited. <laughs> and he goes, all right, do not swallow whatever you do because you will swallow the camera. I'm like, holy fuck. It really is a throat scene. I went to the doctor. I got fucking throated. <laughs> it was horrific, bro. So anyway, he fucking pulls it out my nose and my throat and all this kind of stuff and then sit down and it's results time. Oh, also uh, from the CT scan, they noticed that my ears were incredibly blocked. So he gave me a vacuum for free. Uh, That was like a little bonus. I got my ears vacuumed again. I can hear so well. Did you know my fridge makes noise? I didn't. (laughs) Dude, if you guys have like hearing trouble or you think your ears are clogged up, 
get your fucking ears vacuumed. I think I went to this place initially, not this guy. It's called like clear ears or clean ears, something like that. Get them vacuumed. Don't get them flushed out with a syringe. That's bad. That makes it worse and it doesn't work at all. Get them vacuumed. Completely painless, doesn't hurt. It's just really, really loud, which is a little bit uncomfortable, but it sucks everything out rather than pushes it back in like that syringe shit and when you're in the shower fucking going like this. Terrible. Do the vacuum, completely painless. It cost me like $110. You can get it once a year if you're really bad like me. So apparently I'm real bad. So I, I, I need to get it done once a year. It is amazing night and day difference i thought that i had hearing issues and i was going deaf no my eardrums were blocked by my own wax get them vacuumed incredible get your ears a suck job anyway right so i got that that was a nice little bonus after he fucking stuck a camera down my nose into my throat horrific felt like i was in some kind of weird japanese manga hentai anyway so Turns out I have a deviated septum. Uh, so the left side of my nose, the, I think the bone is literally wrong. So it's just, you can't fix it. You have to get surgery uh, is what he told me. So I need to see one more fucking specialist to confirm that. But also that's not the reason I have this terrible sleep apnea. So I've been waking up tired. I don't rest properly. I never dream, which means I, I like, I'd never sleep deeply. I just have light naps. The, last night, Two nights ago, I literally woke up at like 3 a.m. <laughs> this is this is me at 3 a.m. And I never usually wake up like manually like this. This was me at 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> like I'd been underwater for a minute. All, all I remember was me going, <laughs> and then I was like awake, uh, like adrenaline rushing through me. I almost died in my sleep. It was fucked, bro. That hasn't happened ever. So I think it's getting worse. And, and from the research that I've done, sleep apnea gets as worse as you age. So I have a deviated septum, so I can't breathe through half my nose. So that could be making it worse. But he reckons the reason for my sleep apnea, and I have to do a sleep study to confirm this, where I go and sleep at a hospital, all this shit on me, and they fucking measure me. So he reckons that I have a recessed chin, recessed jaw, sorry, and you're, you're – tongue is obviously attached to, to your jaw and because my jaw is too far back when I'm asleep my tongue covers my throat so even with a clear nose I wouldn't be able to get any air in right so I've literally been diagnosed with leafy chin syndrome it's horrific right it's not good it's not good at all and I'm like well doctor what's the fix so I needed to do a sleep study to confirm this is the issue but if this is the issue, there are two solutions. Either, right, and sleep apnea is bad, you can die from it, especially when you're older. Like, it's a very common thing. And it's and for someone, if you're fat and you have sleep apnea, it's almost definitely because you're fat. Uh, and if you lose weight, it should go away or at least lessen. For me, being so slim and so young and having sleep apnea this bad, not good at all, right? The There's two solutions, right? Solution one, I... Uh, sleep with a, I think it's called a CPAP machine, which is basically a mouth guard attached to a tube attached to a ventilator. And it breathes, it pumps air down your throat while you sleep. Dude, I'm telling you right now, there is no fucking way I'm going to spend the next 70 years of my life getting throated by a machine every night. What, you think I'm going to take a CPAP machine on a fucking plane? Use it at hotels? Absolutely not. So I told the doctor, I was like, look, I don't, I I knew about them and I was like, I can't use that for the rest of my life. If I'm old, I'll use it. I'm not living the rest of my life attached to a machine every time I need to sleep. Because, you know, you're going to rip it off, all that kind of shit. Won't be able to sleep, be horrible for my girlfriend, super noisy. Fuck that, right? So I go, what's the other, what's the alternative? And he goes, well, obviously we need to find out how bad it is. Uh, and we'll know with the sleep study, but he, the doc, this is the nose and throat specialist. He goes, look, looking at you visually, looking at your, your jaw and where it's situated, you almost definitely have this. And if you have sleep apnea this bad, it's a life threatening thing. So the only other alternative, right? And this is freaking me out. What they do is they cut your head in half. And I'm not joking at all. It's called MMA surgery. 
they break your jaw <laughs> and then they move your the whole bottom half of your head forward, move your jawline forward. It's like the opposite of overbite surgery where, you know, you've got an, you've got an, sorry, underbite, where you've got an underbite so they move your jaw back, opposite of that. They move your whole jaw forward. The entire bottom half of your head, they fucking break it with a hammer, move it forward, and then you can breathe because there's more room for your for air to go down your throat that's fucking hectic right and it's not just that you know uh because they move the entire bottom of your face that's like the bottom row of your teeth yeah so then you also need to get braces usually on your top teeth to move where your top teeth are so that you can close your mouth properly it's like crazy fucking in-depth mouth face jaw surgery um but <laughs> at the end of it i was looking at the results bro if i get this shit i'm gonna be so fucking handsome it'll be unbelievable i'm gonna look like brad pitt bro can you think of dude once i got the strong jawline it is over for you cunts over i i'm gonna be so handsome dude i looked at some before and afters some of these dudes had chins in their necks and they walk out looking like Brad Pitt. I'm going to be the most handsome motherfucker on the damn planet. Once I get my new chin, it is over for you hoes. I'm going to be I'm going to look at bitches and they're going to get they're going to be like, "Oh, I understand that WAP song. I reckon I'm going to do the dance." Bro, you want to you want to hear about WAP? You wait till I get my new fucking chin in. Huh? I got a new chin on the way. Dude, I got to get a deviated septum fixed up. I might as well get him to fix my nose too. I'm going full Hollywood. I'm getting a new face. But for real though, that shit's freaking me out. Because, and what is funny, I laughed when he told me, because he, know, he, he knows that I'm a comedian, because I'm like, you look, look, this is my face and my mouth. I need to be able to breathe and talk properly. Because, you know, you know, I notice that sometimes I'm, I'm not getting enough air in, like when I'm eating or... When I'm, when I'm talking and ranting, sometimes I don't get enough fucking air in. So this is super important to me. So I'm like, I, I, he, he tells me about this MMA surgery and he goes, well, on the positive, uh, people notice like a, most patients notice a huge physical improvement and they look much more handsome. Like they've done studies on it. What I was reading, I think it was uh, 80% uh, said there was a marked difference, marked positive difference in their face, how they looked. And then the other 20% said there was no change. So no one comes out of this looking worse. So 80% chance I'm going to be fucking your mother <laughs> after the show, right? If I get this shit. Uh, but I was, he told me about it and, and he said, you know, most people say they look much, much better. And I laughed. I said, that's funny. He goes, what's funny? And he goes, well, like, everyone's just going to think like, unless they've heard this, what I'm saying now, and they've heard me complaining for months on the podcast about not being able to breathe and getting all of these checks. Right. By the time I get this surgery, if I need it, I need to do a sleep study. But, but if I do get this thing, by the time it's over, all of my casual fans, which is obviously most of them, they're all just going to think I've gotten plastic surgery. <laughs> It's a plastic surgeon, does it? And this is like a procedure that a lot of celebrities get. Like they shave their chin down or sometimes celebrities, male celebrities get like implants to get the, the butt chin. Like it, it is a procedure that is done for men and male and female. So if I just all of a sudden take six weeks off social media and then show up, you know, the next month with a brand new jaw, Everyone's just going to, and a new nose, everyone's going to go, oh, Lewis has gone Hollywood. <laughs> he's fucking, he's, he's fixed his whole head up. What a sellout. What's going on? Who's this guy? So fuck, man. That's, um, that's some scary shit though. Uh, because you know, that's like talking and mouth and jaw and that's like my life, uh, and my passion. So that's very scary. But, but it, if the sleep study concludes it's something that I, that I need to get done, I mean, you have to get it done. So I hope it's all right. Um, but we'll see. I'll, I'll definitely let you guys know as soon as I know, which, pro, which with coronavirus, I think, um, cause this isn't like a life threatening thing. The sleep study will probably not be happening 
for months, maybe, I don't know. I'm waiting on my referral. So I'll keep you guys in the, in the, in the loop. <laughs> uh, we'll see what happens with it. Um, but hopefully it will be okay. I don't know when I would get it done. Like, say I got approved for it and it was d deemed necessary. I don't know, because I would have to take, like, from what I've read, it's six weeks to go back to normal because, they, you know, you get this thing done and then you, they wire your jaw shut and you can only drink liquids. Um, so that's obviously I can't do my job. That's no podcast. That's no stand-up. That's no videos for six weeks. So... And that's at a minimum, the six weeks until normal people go back to work. That might, after six weeks, I might just be barely able to talk. That doesn't mean I'll, I'll be able to talk well, you know, sit down and talk for a fucking hour and project and perform and all that kind of stuff. So it could very well mean like a full two months off, maybe even more than that. And let's not fucking forget about the braces. The braces happen before the surgery. So I, I might be a fucking brace face for like, what, 18 months? How long do cunts have braces for? I read it up. It's like minimum six, sometimes 18. Dude, let's be fucking real. That's going to hurt my career. No one wants to look at a cunt with braces. That's why we get, that's why they get bullied. No one wants to look at someone with braces, talk for an hour. Dude, the, the audio numbers of the podcast are going to go way out. What's, what's up, guys? Welcome to Spearhead Sundays. Bro, I'm, I'm like, it's funny, but I'm a little bit like, fuck, this is hectic, isn't it? And I'm trying not to think about it too much because I don't know if I need it, need it. But like the jaw, the nose and throat guy was like, yeah, that's almost definitely what it is. Because when he was looking at my throat, when I sit naturally, with my jaw, there's, he says, there's just not much room at all for air because my tongue is at the back of your jaw and my jaw is too far back. And that's like obscuring my throat. And then if I'm li also lying on my back or my side, there's hardly any air for, uh, any room for air to get through and listening to the recording that jazz sent me, it doesn't even sound like I'm trying to breathe through my nose. It literally just sounds like I'm, I'm going like this and there's no, like room for air to pass through. So I think I'm going to need this shit and that's uh, concerning. But I think that say it's deemed necessary. I think that I would put it off until I've done a tour and my comedy special. And then I go into recovery mode when my tour is finished and the comedy special has been released and then I do the promo because I need to talk to be able to do promo, podcast interviews, all that kind of stuff. And then I take two months off. Fuck, I've never done that before in my life. That's scary to me. But anyway, guys, manscaped.com. <laughs> Woo! Freaking myself out. I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to keep this nice and light. Um. Anyway, oh, fuck. I keep running out of uh, time for miscellaneous bit at the end. I'm going to do – I'll do one. Uh, and then I'm going to do the Patreon only podcast. If you want to listen to that, patreon.com, support me for any amount on there and you get a bonus podcast. There's already two up there and there will be a third by the time I you're listening to this. So definitely go and get that shit and you get early access to everything that I do um, as well as access to the Discord group and you support what I do, you know, like uh, with YouTube fucking me hard in the ass right now, uh, that your support is appreciated. Right. Okay. Ah, oh, right. Here we go. So this is uh, an update. We might be going a little bit long here, but uh, this is an update to uh, an email that I answered previously. Now, if you want to send an email to the show, podcast at lewspears.com. Love hearing your emails. If you've got a story, you need some live advice, you know what I like, send it through podcast at lewspears.com. This is an update, right? Um, so if you don't remember, uh, a guy worked at uh, like a, a hardware store. And uh, he accidentally clogged the toilet. Uh, he accidentally clogged the female toilet at work. He, this is where he works. Clogged it with his wallet. 
uh, and a plumber was coming in to fix the toilet and he didn't know what to do because if he gets found out that, one, he was using the female's toilet after being told not to because the men's was out of commission or whatever, uh, he was told not to use the women's and he was the one who clogged the toilet, this dude was in fear of his job. So the advice I gave this man, and we have an update here of what's happened, I told him to go st- straight to the plumber explain the situation and say, hey, if you find my wallet and you don't tell my boss, I would really appreciate that and I'll give you a bit of cash, right, as a little favour because the plumbers don't give a fuck. they got no loyalty. They're there to fix the toilet. They don't want to get you fired. I, I, I suggest to just go straight to the plumber, come clean to him, and whatever happens, happens because, you know, if the plumber tells your boss, you're done. If you tell the boss, you're done. So you might as well go straight to the plumber and if he's nice, you win. If he's a cunt, that's what was always going to happen anyway, so you don't exactly lose, right? So that's what I told him to do. Here's the update. Hey, Lou, if you remember, I'm the dickhead who clogged the female toilet at work. I took your advice on board, yes, and talked to the plumber. I told him my situation, and he just laughed at me. I very politely asked if he could tell my boss that it was tampons or something like that. He looked to be in his 20s and thought it was a fair gamble, uh, and I thought it was a fair gamble that he would be a good cunt. He said he really shouldn't, but he would cut me some slack and slide me back my wallet on the side. Legend. What a fucking legend. I promised that if there was any cash in my wallet, I would tip him. Dude, why the fuck would he want that? That doesn't sweeten the deal. Oh, by the way, if you find any money in there that's covered in piss and corona-contaminated shit... You can have it. That's not a good deal. Give him 10 clean dollars, would you, you dog? Um, uh, If there was any cash in my wallet, I would tip in, to which he chuckled and said, yeah, right. Yeah, see, he didn't want it. It all went swimmingly, and my work was none the wiser. Now, that's great. And, 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 dude... I know I've read the rest of this email. I want to tell you right here, this is where it should have ended and this is where you should have ended the email. This is where the story should have ended. I would have been a hero. You would have been off scot-free. Everything would have been good and the story would have ended and we're all happy. Unfortunately, this man, right, being a listener of me, is a fucking menace and couldn't help himself uh, because here's, here's what's happened, right? I know. I know this type of person. I am this person. He already decided he was going to get fired. He didn't get fired. So he was like, oh, fuck. I guess I better sabotage it and get fired because I had already planned for that. Better make it happen. (laughs) Right. However, if you recall, my manager is a bit of a bitch. So one night, the boys and I were out drinking. Uh, I'm in New Zealand, and at the time, we did not have lockdown. Uh, We were walking past her house at roughly 3 a.m. I knew it was her house from her Suzuki Swift, which has those little gross family stickers. Uh, In our state of drunkenness, we thought it would be funny to use my house key to add an L, U, and T to the end of the Suzuki badge. Oh, (laughs) slut. Come on, dude. That's not good. Uh, To add an L, U, T to the uh, back of the car. We were correct in thinking it would be hilarious, but incorrect in thinking that we would get away with it. Yeah, come on, you fucking idiot. Of course you're not going to get away with that shit. She must have saw us do it because I got a call from my boss the next morning. Obviously, I was fired because that Suzuki slut had snitched. I'm not bitter, and it's fair enough, but now the cops are getting involved. If I get a payout, why the fuck would you get a payout? You vandalized a co-worker's car. Bro, you deserve that shit. A hundred percent. What? Oh, yeah. So do I get a payout? For what? What? Harassment? Oh, this woman fired me just because I engraved slut on her car at 3 a.m. after figuring out where she lived while I was drunk with the boys. <laughs> you fucking dickhead. Of course you're not getting a payout. If I get a payout, unlikely, I'll be getting your special. Oh, well, fuck, I hope you get a payout, dude. I need those five bucks, loosebears.com. <laughs> oh, dude. All the best, and even though I have a criminal record now, it's still less shit than Miss Lane's be the end. Oh, dude, that's so funny. Oh, I remember those days. I can't criticize you, bro. That was me. I used to vandalize cars with the boys all the time. It was great fun. Objectively and morally reprehensible, definitely a bad thing, but Jesus Christ, it's a good bit of fun, isn't it? Woo! Feel that adrenaline rushing when you flee the scene of the crime. Yeah, look, I'm going to wrap it up there, guys. Um, I'm Lewis Spears, and look, you know, you better, you better remember what I look like now, you know? 
Say goodbye to my little recessed jaw, my little leafy chin. This is the last good look you're going to get at it for a while because pretty soon I'm going to be looking like, um, who's that cunt? Oh, say goodbye to my chin. Say goodbye to this jaw, man, because pretty soon I'm going to be looking like the crimson chin. Absolutely. Remember that cunt from fucking Fairly Odd Parents, the crimson chin? <laughs> That's going to be me soon. I'm going to look like that, uh, that Chad meme. I posted a photo of me on Instagram using the handsome Squidward filter. Who would have thought that in, you know, next year I'm, I'm going to be looking exactly like that. New nose, new chin. I don't know, man. I'm trying to joke about it because in all honesty, I'm a little bit freaked out about it. Anyway, guys, I'm going to uh, continue on and do the Patreon-only podcast. So if you want to keep on listening to that, it's on Patreon right now. Go and get it. Patreon.com slash Lose Spears. Support me. Any of the tiers, you get an extra episode of Spearhead Sundays. I just continue on. It's more of that shit you love, but I don't have to worry about anything. So I get real fucked over there. You know what I'm saying? All right. I'll talk to you guys soon. I'll see you on Patreon. And I sincerely hope you have a shit one.